This time on the Highland Woodworker, we're celebrating 40 years of Highland Woodworking with an all-star guest list. We'll visit with film and TV star Nick Offerman. I find the shop to be very healthy for me and, and this family of workers I've put together. Everyone's favorite woodwright, Roy Underhill. That's our motto, may we cut one for you, and then we brought the big saw. <laughs> and one of the finest tool makers on the planet, Thomas Lee Nielsen. You know, beginning woodworker doesn't need all the tools all at once but something along the lines of a block plane, low angle block plane is what we, what we use. That is the direction, that is the rotation that's working. So, how do we remember that? Plus, Popular Woodworking Magazine's David Teal shows us an easy way to remember router rotation. All of this and more, this time on the Highland Woodworker. Hello, I'm Charles Brock and I'm a Highland Woodworker. I just love coming to Highland Woodworking in Atlanta, Georgia. It's where I get all my fine woodworking tools and a great woodworking education. Earlier this year, Highland Woodworking threw a big 40th anniversary party and we were there. are really just along for the ride. I'm, I'm putting all my pressure down. If you don't see color coming up on the stone, you're not pushing hard enough. Okay, here we go. I'm here to interview Roy Underhill, but I only see his toolbox. Hey, leave us alone. What are you, a hammer? Oh, come on, Roy. Hey, he's not in here. Come on, leave us alone. Roy, I know you're there. I said leave us alone. <laughs> oh, Roy, it looks like you've gone digital. Uh, I think so. No, these are made from analog, actually. Oh. Uh, so there you go. Well, there's no change in Roy. Oh, that's painful to say. <laughs> painful to hear. How you doing? I'm doing great, All right, Roy. let me take uh, these guys off. Yeah, well, it looks like you've been busy with a box. Yeah. Then you've been busy at Highland Woodworking. Yeah, absolutely. Drilling uh, and sawing. The big saw. That's yeah. our motto. May we cut one for you. And then we brought the big saw. So <laughs> we tried. I thought that was my mother-in-law's motto. No, no. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's go. a good one there. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, what have you been up to back home in Oh, Grand where you came over there, there last time. Yeah, uh, down by the river there in the waterfall. Right. Uh, nothing, looking at building a big wooden water wheel. That'll be uh, fun to put in at the mill. So. Can't wait to see yeah, that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, and just run, working with the school and the students and a lot, just, man, a lot of, lot of wood going through the place. Yeah, so. a lot of classes. You're teaching all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Tell us about some of your classes. Wow, we got new ones that are making uh, things for the bench top, uh, you know, things like uh, miter jacks and uh, making uh, uh, donkey's ears and things like that that you use to plane precise 45. Do they look like these? No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Uh, now they're very nice. Uh, they're nice too, but your ears are nice too. So they're, they're, they're good. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, no, I th things like that. Uh, we've had the usual the Windsor chair classes and Peter Follinsby teaching uh, oh, yeah. spoon great. making. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. So things that you can use. Well, but mostly yes, yeah, and a few technique classes. I teach more of the technique um, where you really don't take something home that you can use, but uh, uh, the introduction to dovetail and stuff like that, which I like to do. So I do all yeah. the beginner uh, classes. And the other guys like to do the more advanced ones. So that I suits think, me fine. I think I learned to do my first dovetails from watching your show. Oh, and that's been a while back. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> they have grown and changed. Because I, I got to say, the best, I, you don't know what you don't know until you start teaching. 
And then you've got 10 people a week, new people a week, uh, asking you questions and saying, well, I read you do it this way. And you go, huh, okay. And then the next class, the next week, you say, hey, let me show you the real way to do that. You know, yeah. pretend like you knew that all along. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's the best way to learn. So that, that's made a lot of changes in the way I work. Yeah, so what is in the future? It's just more of the, more of the same, uh, enjoying work and then who knows. Yeah. Every, every t it's, it's impossible to say because every turn I've had has been unexpected. And very often when there's uh, something that looks like misfortune at the time, just makes you available for something even better. So I, I, I have no idea. But How many years? Been very show? lucky. Oh, 38 years, yeah. 38 years. Yeah. That's got to be one of the longest running yeah, programs so. on television. Yeah, about. indeed, it was. <laughs> I think, and uh, uh, as far as I know, it still is, yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot. I guess the budget was so low, and it was, they, they never noticed we were there. They figured it'd be, <laughs> it, would, it would cost them more to change the, uh, <laughs> the, the uh, uh, program lineup. To change the card that says the wood, it cost more to do that than to cancel the show. So, <laughs> well, that, they, uh, now when a lot of people don't know that I think it's right when they start filming your show, it is straight. Yeah, through. it's one shot, and Whatever again, very cheap. Said. Yeah, this is the whole point: is uh, it's one shot from beginning to end and one take. And so I get one take and one continuous shot. So that's it. Have you it. ever had some that you didn't think were going to kind of work out? Yeah, I, I said a word that I shouldn't have said. <laughs> and they said they'd pay to go back and redo that part. I think we've all done that. Yeah, that was a mistake. Like no, actually, you know, uh, back in the day of low def, 720 line per inch television, I was a very good woodworker. When they came out with high def, people started looking and said, man, this guy, what happened to him? Uh, and particularly if you uh, cut yourself in a high def, it's not, it's not funny. It's, it's not, inter red. it's, it's, ba it's <laughs> gross. It's really uh, so that doesn't work. And the problem is the director kept yelling, cut, cut. <laughs> I didn't know what he meant. And uh, so, no, but le nevertheless, uh, it, uh, the medium has changed and the business has changed, you know. Um, Public television, you know how it is. Dog eat dog. I've got Clifford, the big red dog, after me all. It's anyway, it's uh, it's fun, doing good. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm always excited yeah. about the show. I, I tape it every oh, Saturday my goodness. in my oh. market in Tennessee. Holy and, cow! And then during the middle of the week, I'll play it sometime. Holy and, cow! And, and, oh. I, and I enjoy it. Uh, uh, there's so much life put into it. Uh, well, I like the the guests. Yeah, it's so deep in everybody, uh, and uh, they you, that's what we've been doing today. You know, trying to bring out that depth that's in everyone because they, we've all evolved working wood. You know, this is part of being a human. Yeah. And you stop. You're not a human anymore. Yeah. So you know, we get folks who are the uh, evangelists of uh, woodworking, and they're great. They you know they have a strong spirit. But I like just as much the folks who are just discovering it for the first time and they feel that inside themselves. And yeah, that's that great. enthusiasm. And yeah. being able to raise their self-esteem from being able to make yeah. something oh, yeah. with their hands. That's, that's yeah, really yeah, cool. yeah. It gives you a sense of confidence on the planet. You know, without that, you know, what are you doing? You know, yeah, that's exactly you, right. you, the trees are here, you're here. What, you know, what's not to like, you know? <laughs> well, tell you what, from my perspective, Highland Woodworking helped me in my oh, yeah. beginning days. They were kind of a new business. I could go through their catalog and I could learn so much mm -hmm. from it. I, indeed, it's been. And at the same time, you came along, learned so much from you. Uh, it's great having both of you together. Oh, hey, thank you so much, Charlotte. That's great. Thank, thank you. you thank you. What a treat. Coming up. The big 40th anniversary show continues with fine tool maker Thomas Lee Nielsen. Then we'll catch up with film, television, and woodworking star Nick Offerman. But first, Popular Woodworking Magazine's Tips, Tricks, and Techniques is all about routers. Find out why we're giving this one a big thumbs up. Stay with us. You're watching The Highland Woodworker. I'm just an average down-to-earth woodworker. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably about a 5. But one place I score a perfect 10 is right here. And I plan on keeping all 10. That's why I have a saw stop table saw. And there's more. Plenty of power, superior dust collection, and absolute accuracy. These features have made it the best-selling cabinet saw in America. Let Highland Woodworking help you put a saw stop 
in your shop. A lot of folks say they just don't make tools like they used to anymore. I don't know, I suppose that's true in some cases. But the good stuff is still out there. I'm talking about the tools that are just a pleasure to use, that are well designed to get the job done quickly and efficiently, and are made to last so they'll get passed on to the next generation. Whatever tools my grandkids use, I know one thing, they'll be keeping them Tormek sharp. For 35 years, Lee has manufactured the world's best joinery jigs. From our award-winning dovetail jigs and mortise and tenon jigs, to newer innovations like router table jigs. Easily add strong, beautiful joinery to your woodworking pieces, like half-blind dovetails, box joints, mortise and tenon joints, and through dovetails. Lee, simply the easiest and most versatile router joinery jigs. Woodworkers count on American-made forest saw blades for smooth, quiet cuts every time, without splintering, scratching, or tear-outs. The famous Woodworker 2 is the all-purpose combination blade, but for special cuts, Woodworker 2s are available for cutting dovetails, for flat bottom joinery. A 30-tooth blade is perfect for ripping, a 48-tooth blade for superior cross cuts, and a finger joint blade set. There is a perfect Forest Woodworker 2 for every table saw cut. Highland Woodworking has been a leader in woodworking education for more than 30 years. They offer all kinds of woodworking classes year-round, ranging from how to hand cut dovetails and mortises to how to sharpen a plane or a chisel, how to build a cabinet, a chair, or a bookcase, or how to turn a wooden bowl. There are classes on wood finishing, French polishing, and even antique furniture restoration. For a list of upcoming classes that may interest you, just look in their catalog or go to highlandwoodworking.com. Hey there Highland Woodworker fans, here at Popular Woodworking we are happy to share our tips and tricks with you for every episode. Take a look at this one, hope you enjoy it. Today we're going to actually talk about router bit rotation and I'm going to show you a trick for remembering which way it's going, but I want to talk about router rotation itself in the first place. Um, it's important to have the router bit going against your wood in the right orientation because the bit cuts in one direction. The trick is, if you're going in the wrong direction, pushing the router on the wrong direction against the wood, it does what's called a climb cut. Why is that a bad thing? Well, it's actually a good thing sometimes, but very seldom. How about that? But why it's a bad thing, think about if you take a, uh, a push car, a wind-up car, and you set it down and it goes, right? That's the idea. That's the way it's supposed to do. But if you take that wind-up car and push it down and go against the direction, that's technically what a router bit is doing. The problem is if you're climb cutting, then the router and the router bit sits down like that car and it takes off and you lose control of the router. So that's why you don't want to climb cut unless you are very much in control. So let's take a look at router bit rotation and talk about a way to remember it. So I have a router essentially upside down as it would appear, say in a router table, to show you the direction. Now you can see the carbide on here is facing cutting edge wise in this direction. So that means when the router turns, it's cutting this way, and that's so that it will bite into the wood like this. That is the direction, that is the rotation that's working. So how do we remember that? Well, the little trick is to take your right hand, and the right hand is the important part, and make a fist and you, with your thumb sticking up. You're not looking for a ride, but you're looking for a safe ride on your router, okay? The idea is that your thumb is emulating the bit's direction, the bit's angle sticking up. And if you think about it, the way the fingers are curved around there, that is the correct rotation for the bit. So use your thumb trick to go, okay, I know that this router bit is gonna turn this way. Cleverly enough, if you turn this upside down, it still works, 
because the bit is still turning this way and that's where you're going. So you can use that as one trick to do it, to remember which way the router is climbing. Now, the other thing to remember, here's another little trick. If you've got your board here, if you're cutting on the outside of the board with a profile like this, the idea is to go counterclockwise, and that's the way I have the arrows drawn here. And again, that works with your thumb because the bit is cutting this way, so we're scooping this way as we go. Like so, like so, all the way around. If this were a frame, you'd want to go the opposite direction on the inside, clockwise on the inside. So this works out pretty well. And again, we've got a router table set up here. Your fence is always going to help you here. Now, right to left is always the way we want to go, correct? Again, we've got our thumb up here. We're biting this way, this way, and our fence is here. So once again, our router bit is spinning this way and biting into the wood just the right way. So we're moving it past here, no problem. So remember, right thumb, up, rotation follows your fingers. Simple enough, one way to remember which way to cut right and keep it safe. It's an easy tool to use. When it comes to fine hand tools, Thomas Lee Nielsen produces the ones every woodworker talks about. And when I caught up with him at Highland Woodworking's 40th anniversary celebration, we talked about them. Take a look. To nice see to you see you, again. absolutely. Uh, this looks like a product that I want to keep away from my mother-in-law because she could run me off pretty quick with this, but what are we looking at? Well, it's a new mallet that we're going to have out within a year. Uh, brass with a uh, wooden insert in the middle so you can re replace the head. You do that by taking it apart, push that out of there, put a new uh, one in. You know, this might be the mallet with forethought that I've heard about. Yes, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> mallet of forethought. Yes. Well, so, that, that looks like a nice product. Well, it's know? got great weight. So for, we call it a, a, a small persuader. Yes, or a large persuader, considering who's using it. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, Thomas, uh, talking to new woodworkers, I mm -hmm. always tell them, I used to come up here to Highland Woodworking uh, years ago, and I would buy for $99 a number seven joiner plane, Right. take it home, and spend four days trying to make it a usable product. Yes. And they don't have to do that anymore. That's why we're in business. I, I kind of <laughs> figured it would lead to that. And you've done a great job of looking at that niche and giving woodworkers something that they could work with. Thank you very much. It's important. You shouldn't have to, you know, treat a tool like a kit. <laughs> that's make right. It work. I bought a $99 kit. Exactly. Yeah, that's, right. That's I got exactly. the parts, but they weren't working. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, tell us about uh, uh, some of your your basic planes that a woodworker should start out with and uh, just kind of tell your story as you do. Well, the hard thing is to decide what tool to get first. So, we focus on what we call core tools. And, um, you know, beginning woodworker doesn't need all the tools all at once, but something along the lines of a block plane low angle block plane is what we what we use. Uh, this one has a an adjustable mouth so that if you want to tighten up the mouth and um, close the gap there it helps to avoid tear out on the wood to do that. So that's one. This is a non-adjustable mouth version, a smaller one, kind of an apron plane size. So a, a small block plane is really important something in the middle range, which would be perhaps uh, this, which is a, a larger version of this. It has an adjustable mouth. It's at a low angle. It has a very, very thick blade, so you don't have chatter. It's a solid, heavy tool. Just feel, feel how solid that is. Well, that's great. Yeah, so a number 62 should be used for what? Well, this is for general stock removal. So, kind of a jack plane. Like a jack plane. Yeah. So um, that would be used in the beginning to um, knock down the high spots and flatten something uh, rough, roughly. And then you want to take a larger tool, and this is a number eight because that guy's really big. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the biggest tool that we have. This is a little too big for most people. But a number seven, number eight, maybe a number six, which is 18 inches long. And that long sole here is a flat reference surface. 
So if you want to make that flat, you know, you use something that's as long as possible to achieve flatness. That can ride the whole board. Exactly. Yeah. And after that, you want to use something to smooth it with. And there are several options. One is you can go back to this tool, sharpen it up again a little bit, close the mouth down, and take fine shavings. And you can do a good job with this one. But this is the uh, traditional smoothing plane size, which is a little shorter and a little wider proportionally. Mm -hmm. So um, what you're doing with that is, if there's still any imperfections left on the board, you're riding over them a little bit as you plane. Um, but we're, you're also taking very fine shavings. So uh, working on that, you're taking very fine shavings and you're getting uh, as smooth a surface as possible. And, and the heft of the, the heft tube, is we a, still have a pretty hefty tube. Heft is, yes. That's bronze, it's a little heavier than iron, and I happen to believe that that's an advantage. The heft is an advantage. Uh, we also have a innovation that uh, we came out with a few years ago, and I don't think I have one here, but this is, this is the frog on the tool. This part here that holds the blade is called the frog. Sure. And it's bedded in the tool at 45 degrees. However, if you want to smooth difficult woods, it actually helps to have a little higher angle on the blade. There's a couple ways to do that. So you all vary the angles on the frogs. For so we, we reproduce frogs at 50 and 55 degrees, as well as 45 degrees. And for something like tiger maple, curly maple, uh, a 50 degree frog will uh, make much easier planing without tear out. So you can just remove this, put it in there, sharpen your blade, put it in there, and, and go. So for basic um, flattening, those three planes, a, a small one for the, for the final stage, a long one for the middle flattening stage, and a medium sized plane for the roughing stage. And I tell you, the beautiful part is you don't have to, to go home. You do not. Stick a piece of, uh, of, of paper down to your joiner and work that sole till, till it's perfect because it comes to you that way. Yes. The, the sides are square to the sole. Yep. Uh, this, you've really revolutionized fine woodworking. Well, thank you. And if somebody thinks that their plane that they bought from us is not sharp, or excuse me, square or flat, don't try to do it yourself. Send it back for us because it should be. I tell you what. Out of the box. Thomas Lee Nielsen, you've done a great job for fine woodwork. Thank you very much, Chuck. Good to see you. Nice Good to see talk you. to you. Coming up. And that's why I love Highland Woodworking. Any at any store like this, which I we don't have in Los Angeles, so, so that I have to come all the way to Atlanta to <laughs> to experience this Disneyland. A conversation with the one and only Nick Offerman. You're watching. The Highland Woodwork. Whiteside Machine Company has been in business for over 30 years, providing customers with quality American made router bits. Fine Woodworking Magazine has declared Whiteside router bits best overall and best value when compared against 17 other brands. No matter the router application, they have the type and profile of carbide router bit you need. When you put a white side router bit to work in your shop, it is guaranteed to make you smile. What is quality? Is it quick? Forgettable? Easy? No, it isn't quick or easy. It isn't forgettable. Quality takes work. It takes time. Quality lasts and it starts at Bell Forest, a leading global supplier of figured and exotic woods. Order online at bellforestproducts.com. Highland Woodworking stocks a wide selection of Rikon power tools known for their innovative design and rugged durability. Highland has sold thousands of Rikon's industry-leading bandsaws with sizes to fit every woodworking need, from the compact affordable 10-inch model to competitively priced 14 and 18-inch models. Shop us also for Rikon's reliable planers, lathes, and professional low-speed grinder, all with an exceptional five-year warranty. Rikon. Power Tools.
If you can't make it to Highland Woodworking in Atlanta, Georgia, you can shop online at highlandwoodworking.com. They're great at getting what you want to your shop quick. Nick Offerman. Nice to see you, Chuck. Nice to see you. I tell you what, last time I saw you, we were in New York City on uh, on a special show is for woodworkers. Uh, what was that show? Martha Stewart. Yeah, Martha Stewart. You were teaching her how to make a paddle, I believe. A, a canoe paddle, that's right. Yeah, and, and I was there with my rocking chairs, and a lot's happened since. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of water under the bridge. Yeah, so you've done a lot of paddling. I've done, I think I've done more than Martha has <laughs> since we shot that. Has any of it been against the, the current? There has been some upstream, but uh, I take my time and I manage to get to the bank. <laughs> there you go. Listen, um, you, you have had just a, a great career uh, with television and movies, and I've seen some of your work, and, and I've enjoyed it. And Thank you. It's kind of unsung to a lot of people that you're really an outstanding woodworker. Uh, tell us about some of the projects you've done and some of the things you're working on now. Well, uh, thank you. I, I, uh, I love studying woodworking. Um, sort of, it's gone hand in hand with my acting career because it's something you can do on your own, on your own hours. You know, you don't need to, an administration, you don't need anybody producing it, you can just go to your shop and get to work. And so I've enjoyed learning, teaching myself mo mostly from books and, and periodicals. Um, so I've made all kinds of furniture. I, I really uh, am drawn to slab furniture, Nakashima kind of stuff, uh, also shaker pieces, craftsman pieces. I, I think because I'm not a finesse kind of person, once, once I discovered those, those kind of pieces where the joinery is the decoration, I didn't, I've never felt a need to go beyond that to, to more period federal pieces or Chippendale pieces where you get into, you know, much more difficult and meticulous work. There are people that are great at that, and I would rather just make one beautiful slab and sit there and have a beer at it. Um, so I made a lot of furniture and... Uh, I built a couple canoes um, that were really satisfying because I, I love canoeing, canoe paddles. And now um, I, I'm working on some ukuleles. I, I want to eventually make my own guitar because I tour and I play the guitar. And I was shopping for an expensive vintage guitar and I kept going into the store to buy it. And I'd sit there and I'd play it and I would hear myself and I would think, you know, I can sound this mediocre on a much cheaper guitar. There, <laughs> there's really no need for this Cadillac. And then it occurred to me, oh, I should figure out and make my own. That would be a much better story, and it'll sound just as crappy as this does. And a ukulele is a great place to start, and they're kind of the rage now. They are, yeah. They're, uh, they're definitely experiencing a resurgence in popularity, and so those are really fun. And sort of hand in hand with that, since half the year I'm away doing movies or whatever, you know, touring, my shop itself has also become one of my main projects. So it, I used to be alone in my shop, but then when my acting career took off, I wanted my shop to stay alive and keep working, so I began to bring people in, and now we have five or six people working there, and we have like a store online at OffermanWoodshop.com. That it's, it's become kind of a community. Uh, is that right? It is, yeah. It's uh, and we have we have a couple other shops in LA, uh, in, and also our friends run a thing called Angel City Lumber, where they've started an urban lumber mill, where they have a couple sawmills, they have a kiln and a vacuum kiln, and they're going crazy milling up urban trees that, you know, you never take down a tree. It's trees that come down from construction or weather. And instead of going to the landfill or becoming firewood, these guys get them and they turn them into viable lumber for woodworkers. So we, we have this community going and in our shop, there's a sense of co-op, you know, where we have people aspiring to find woodworking. We also have people 
that are, are just happy to have a place to work and get to work with their hands mm -hmm. so they don't have to flip burgers, you know. It, it's something, you know, I always say jokingly that it keeps me out of the pub, but it's not really that much of a joke. Like, I, you know, it keeps me from having time on my hands. I, what do they say, idle hands or the devil's, devil's plate? Yeah. yeah. And so I find the shop to be very healthy for me and, and this family of workers I've put together. And it kind of lifts up a whole group of people. And uh, have you found it kind of growing, uh, inviting other people into the experience? Yeah, very much. I mean, I've been, uh, my third book, uh, Good Clean Fun, is about woodworking, but also about my shop. And everybody in the shop has a chapter. And it's amazing to me how, uh, what, what an incredible response that sensibility has. So we teach workshops in our community. We have a program called Woodworks that works with homeless and skid row people. It allows them to uh, sign up for credit doing woodworking labor, making like cutting boards and simple products. And in, in exchange, they can sign up for something they need, like a pair of glasses or a suit of clothes or a first month's rent. So it's, it's wonderful how this little shop where I just wanted to make a table, now we have a whole community of people wanting to improve their lives by making things with their hands. Yeah, the self-esteem that builds from creating something yourself, especially if you've never done it, is, is amazing. And it carries really is. over to, uh, to their families and to the community as a whole. It's, it's a great thing you're doing. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, for all of us. I mean, that's why I love Highland Woodworking. Any, any store like this, which I, we don't have in Los Angeles, so, so that I have to come all the way to Atlanta to, <laughs> to experience this Disneyland. But it, it not only does it inspire you by turning on the part of your brain that solves problems with your hands, but you find then that that applies to the rest of your life. Suddenly, you're in you're in troubleshooting mode. So, where you you know you get a flat tire, and maybe instead of just calling AAA, you say, "Well, hang on a second. There's some tools in my trunk. Maybe I can figure this out." and be back on the road in seven minutes. You know, woodworking uh, is a series of questions. Every, every project you do, whatever you're doing, you've got that next question. Mm -hmm. And so, undoubtedly, you're one of those people, I guess, like myself, that uh, I enjoy trying to, to, to answer those questions. And then it creates another question. And that's, that's a very fulfilling way of life. If you pass that on to others, you've really got some. I think so. I, I mean, I think it's the same. My, my wife and I love to do jigsaw puzzles when we have vacation time. And it's feeding, it's, it's the same uh, dopamine supply system that by activating somehow that part of your brain, the problem solving part, it's just like people that love to do crosswords, except you're doing it in a tangible way. And at the end, instead of a newspaper full of ink, you've got uh, a dining table or, or a rocking chair. Sure. Well, what are some of your current questions, if I may ask? Um, well, I, I've just finished, uh, so I'm making these ukuleles, and it's, it's something, one of the great things about woodworking for me is if I'm away for three months working on an acting job, whatever my next project is, like these ukuleles, I'm obsessed with them. So even while I'm off shooting a movie, in my spare time, I'm, I'm thinking about what's my next step or how am I going to shape this or that. And the really hard part about the ukuleles, uh, the, the curved sides of the ukulele are about a 16th inch thick or 330 seconds. And so figuring out how to successfully use steam and heat and force to bend those sides. The perfumes. Yeah, yeah. it has been, uh, has been a really tough <laughs> challenge and I, I broke a bunch of wood you know tr too hot too fast too cold uh, not wet enough and I finally figured out you know my the sort of formula and so that was a huge relief that felt like a huge victory and now I'm averaging every, for every every 10 sides I bend I'd say I only break one or two now that's good and yeah if I can if I can keep that record going I'll be happy well, well, Nick, uh, you're known for so many things, acting, 
uh, woodworking, building communities, helping people. Uh, what would you like for your legacy to be? Well, gosh, I mean, I'm, I'm really grateful, you know, that uh, my life's work, uh, you know, work, I'm a trained theater actor, and theater is all about delivering a sort of medicine to people, you know, sure. uh, from, from the stage to the audience. And there's a lot about my woodworking life that feels similar, it's just in a more direct way. Instead of making 200 people laugh, I'm making six people have their dinner off the floor, uh, but still, I'm doing them some good. And I've had the benefit of great teaching, and still do. I mean, you know, one of the great things about a community like this is we're surrounded by great teachers and peers, and we're, we're all constantly learning from each other, you know? Even, even when we think we, even when we've made a chair dozens of times, you are still open to the fact that Somebody might come in and say, look at this trick I figured out. And you're like, holy cow, you know. And you're constantly tweaking it. Yeah. Tweaking the idea, working with it. Trying yeah. To make the, it better. The, the puzzle part never shuts off. And so, if anything, if I have a legacy, I, hope, I just hope that I'm successfully able to take the great teaching I've received and pass it along as best I can to other people. Hey, that's great. If any of us can do that, uh, we've made life better. Thank you so much, Nick. My, my pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, Chuck. You know, we are fortunate to live at a time when woodworking information is available in so many formats. But don't forget books. Most of the master woodworkers that we present on the show are not only voracious readers, many are excellent authors. If you like Nick Offerman, he has a slew of books from which to share his history, thoughts on life, and woodworking. Paddle Your Own Canoe is Nick's memoir and guide to life, if you will. It tells his manly story from being born in a cornfield to how he attracted his lovely wife in Nick's own irreverent style, of course. Gumption contains Nick's Tell it like it is thoughts on 21 people he says made our country great. From kazoos, fine furniture, to cedar strip canoes, they build them all. Nick tells the story of those craftsmen that work in his Hollywood workshop. And he teaches the reader the how-tos for some great woodworking projects. That makes good clean fun a must read. If you want more of a practical guide to traditional woodworking, my friend Roy Underhill's book, The Woodwright Shop, can teach you what you need to know about trees, tools, and dovetails. Gosh, he's been doing it for more than 30 years. Every woodworker needs sharp tools, and that's for sure. Well, Thomas Lee Nielsen has written the best all-around volume on the subject. Everything from scrapers to saws to chisels and plain irons is covered. It will be your go-to sharpening guide. Get a good woodworking book from Highland Woodworking. Take a load off and get inspired. It will make you smile. Improve your woodworking experience. Sign up for Wood News Online a monthly newsletter showcasing the latest news, tips, and classes Highland Woodworking has to offer. By signing up, you'll receive the latest episode of the Highland Woodworker, special store promotions, and Wood News Online delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up today. That's all the time we have for the show today, but check us out on social media and come back to see us next time on the Highland Woodworker.